fashion. The fashion of the time. Not what you'd expect to hear from a 13th century abbot, I imagine. Well, there are a certain number of our monks at Hyde Abbey who are as interested in their appearance as perhaps you are today. Although St. Benedict, whose rule we abide by, made it clear that one heavy robe for winter and a lighter robe for summer held in by a simple belt would suffice. That there should be no argument about the color or the coarseness of the material and to accept with the guidance of their abbot whatever is available and can be bought cheaply within the region where they lived. Well, we lived in Winchester, the capital of England. King John regularly stayed here. King Henry III was educated here. We are used to seeing the noble folk of England, wearing the latest silks, satins, brocade and velvets brought back from Europe and the Crusades. Now, fashion feasted our eyes everywhere. Now there happened to live in the Brooks area of the city, Juliana, a washerwoman, who from the elderberries she collects made a blue dye. Thomas, a monk I'd known since my early days at the Abbey, asked permission if he could have his leather belt dyed that colour. It was a small adornment which I thought could do little harm. But the fashion caught on and several of the younger monks in particular wanted it too. The blue was a, it was a rich, deep azure, I can see it now. It was the colour of God's sky. Peter, our bishop, came to the Abbey to discuss our forthcoming journey to London to witness the re-signing of the Magna Carta and saw several of our monks wearing their newly dyed belts. In fact, I pointed them out to him, saying, isn't that the finest blue you've ever seen on leather? Oh, he exploded with such rage, saying this is completely against the rule of St. Benedict, and I'll take it to a higher authority if you don't have them return back to the undyed leather of before. He said it's a disgrace for the monks of Hyde Abbey, who are coming with us on this important journey to London, to be so attired, and I said, I suppose he had a point, but I reminded him, as a mitred abbot, under the rule of St. Benedict, it was at my discretion. And I reminded myself of that other great rule of St. Benedict. Whenever you have a quarrel with another, seek peace before the sun goes down. During our second jug of meat, he finally calmed and I told him they wouldn't wear the belts on our journey to Westminster. Early the following morning, in the chapter house, I told Thomas and the younger monks how the bishop was less than pleased. However, I said for certain occasions, here within the Abbey precincts, they could still wear blue.